the most important question at that point was to where where to site the building like because the program was pretty large it was very important to come up with a program uh, come up with a site that that you know could hold a program like this a site that was central in the city where people would come access was easy also that became almost a symbol of of say strength of of the common masses the kind of word in kashmir so i think one thing one such site that i encountered in in my travels was the idga ground which is a huge ground in the middle of, of downtown very central with its location uh, almost connects the national highway of of the north of srinagar to the south with the idga in the center and this this ground what's very interesting about this ground is that this ground is actually a prayer ground for the whole of the city so during e uh, three times in the year you have the whole of the city kind of congregating in this place so you have men coming and praying in this place all of them in hordes coming and and kind of praying during eid but the rest of the year this place is also used as as a sports ground it's used as a protest ground it has uh, a, a, a very heritage uh, structure of the ali jan mosque on the northern corner which becomes a very very important uh, religious and political symbol for the common people in kashmir it is flanked with like i said the national highway on one end and a, a huge community of of kashmiris on the other that kind of uh, live right along the periphery of the ground and one third of the ground is so, so basically the ground is divided into three parts like i said one is the prayer ground one is the ground of the mosque where a lot of other activities happen and the third part is is now designed as a garden which lies completely empty with no use because of very poor maintenance and also because of of, of its kind of uh, uh say uh, proximity to to the protest ground and stuff like that so although it's it's a social reality that kind of exists in kashmir that everybody is used to but people usually don't prefer to go to a ground like this because there's absolutely no program for them to kind of do anything it's just a large open maidan so i think that the the ground was seen as a good opportunity or site that that i took up as a site for my intervention so the ground usually is actually uh, Uh, is actually such that it's it's almost triangular in in shape like that almost like a peninsula with the the rest of the ground kind of extending ahead and uh, if this portion is what is is of the ground this is the national highway and 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 this junction kind of connects a lot of other inner city roads that kind of come out to this main junction so even accessibility was something that you know was very easy into the ground from a place like this to so say even if there's curfew and and there's some something that's kind of happening here and you you ought to go like it's it's a compulsion that you have to go it would be something that would be very convenient for you to travel and kind of go to that place so there were multiple entries that were to the garden from various parts from the the community side here and from the main ground here from the main uh, national highway here which also made the site uh, very very kind of uh, open for people to kind of come in and, and and do their things so what happens is right now that that on site when th th there's this garden that kind of exists there's a small water body that kind of exists on the side and there are two three jogging tracks that are around which are completely not used and has seen a lot of vandalism lately because of no kind of program intent to the particular ground so i saw that as an opportunity of kind of starting my basis of design for for what i wanted to do and then placing the programs also also what's interesting is that right above the ground is is a graveyard called the martyrs graveyard which also becomes a very important sort of political space for the local people in kashmir because what we realize is that whoever kind of protests in this ground and and kind of loses his life say whether it's the police of kashmir whether it is the the innocent people in kashmir whether it is the soldiers in kashmir they are all paid respect and always buried in a ground here so it becomes a very very important uh, kind of location for people around to to not only remember the lost ones but also remember the people that always tried to voice their opinions and the great people that always try to fight for say what the rights of people and the rights of the humans staying in this region now were always buried here so i think i think it becomes a very very important kind of place also for the people which is why it was an apt site for intervention so one was one really wonders in a large ground like this how would you say start make start the process of 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 design where would you place your building what would the semantic of the building be and how would you organize programs etc so i mean for me it was very very difficult to come up with a master plan of the whole site because one realizes that if you if you make buildings across the whole site that become a too much built up area when it already is a space that functions for a lot of different programs for people 
then when you fragment a building it becomes very easy for somebody to come and appropriate that building because that's something that's happened across years in in Kashmir so you have you have old um, movie theaters you have old halls that have been appropriated now by the military that have been appropriated by uh, liberation fronts that want to want want independence from Kashmir so that is that is some sort of appropriation that I didn't want my building to have so it was very important for me to then cite my building very very correctly so that it would be used by the people without that appropriation but also would in some sense give that space for accommodation of other people as well so you know if you have somebody who's coming there as a, pro as, a, as, a as a protester say from the liberation front my building would still give him that space to accommodate him and come and and let him come here for a dialogue for some sort of reconciliation with the rest of the people who whose demands are, are, are different so you know it almost became important to give that space of of accommodating people accommodating the four different uh, actors within kashmir so you have the commoners you have the seat of power which is the government uh, you have the military which is which is extremely powerful in a region like this and then you have the liberation front so i think i think that is something that i always had at the back of my, my head that these were the people that you know the building had to cater to which is why then like from the studies I talked about from before the social spaces and everything that I went to uh, I picked up cues of architecture from there so one thing that was kind of everywhere in all of these structures were the charbag which is a typology that kind of very is readily accepted by people there because of the Mughal influence like I spoke of before so because I was looking at this as a garden of reconciliation then I took the the charbag structure as a structure that I would overlay on the garden and and two things that the, the structure let me do is one that it acted as a precedent to a typology that was very readily accepted and two that it actually let me organize my programs very systematically so it almost became like a strategy of organization for me because everything was divided then into a char bag into a grid so you know it it allowed me for smaller char bag spaces where smaller buildings would be there it allowed me for large char bags where you know like a a, a monument almost like an institution would be placed so I think that that's something that happened and then the char bag inspiration was basically taken from the graveyard because even that was uh, that existed as a char bag so the, the grid kind of almost sort of came from the graveyard that was then overlaid onto site and the whole site almost divided into these char bags and then the water body was almost seen as as an opportunity to cut the the site diagonally to provide for more spaces and more interactions from the charba along the water edge for the people that kind of came to the building so you know there was the water body was almost divided such that it, it it almost sort of cut the whole charba diagonally to increase those interaction spaces within within the whole the whole uh, design intent so uh, there were multiple entries like i spoke of before so there would be an entry here there would be an entry here there was an entry here from the the community etc and then all the buildings were actually looked at as the typologies that would exist in, a, in within a char bag so you know you have a typology which is which almost encircles a, a char bag in in the center like that which is almost like a courtyard typology with the char bag that kind of exists in the center of it then you have a typology that kind of runs along the char bag here so you know you have the the axis of the char bag in the center and the building that kind of runs along it you have a type where the building almost sits in the middle of the char bag like that almost as a monument which is a very readily accepted kind of readily seen typology because even if you look at all the Mughal architecture in Delhi you will see the monument almost kind of sitting in the middle of char bag so these were certain typologies that were then used to kind of place certain buildings so you know I realized that a, ment a, set a health center would work the best if there was an internal courtyard because the health center was seen as an opportunity for kind of women to come to this place and and talk of things that they usually would not at home get some sort of healing not through medical treatment per se but through basic activities like that of gardening like learning art just speaking to other other survivors other people that were suffering from the same things take the mental trauma that somebody kind of faces in in a conflict like this so i think it was very important for the programs to be very soft in nature for people to kind of come and very subconsciously kind of heal while doing other activities so you know that that sort of courtyard typology fits really well 
for the health center then the school was imagined as, as two bars with your public access in the middle where you know what was envisaged is that every time the, the kid comes to the school and there are certain kind of visitors in the garden that have come for other kind of functions they would always interact in breaks you know the kid could kind of almost run out of school and meet somebody else who say is a poet and who's come to that school to kind of teach but has also come to the library to do whatever archive his poetry or like you know like write more or read something about some other poet in Kashmir so everything that was done within sight was basically always imagined from the point of view of how I was making interactions possible within the various actors in in Kashmir so even when the semantic of the building was decided I always had had this idea of, of encounter of chance encounter of, of interactions at the back of my head which is why then I wrote a smaller sort of text smaller sort of stories that there were imaginary stories were almost imaginations of what the building would do and I think from those smaller stories I, I started developing the architecture so like I said the functions before uh, I'll just show you the plan and I think it will be clear from there and all the buildings were placed in such a way that they'd be in, cross, uh, in very close proximity of where the water body that kind of was cutting through the whole grid of the garden was placed. So they'd be very close to that. So all, almost kind of made avenues that connected the, the, the function with the water. And uh, that's where most of the encounters would happen is something that I imagined. And uh, all the landscape that was also imagined because it was the gar it was a garden at the end of the day. It was, it was full of landscape that was also so sort of thought of and designed. So every program had landscape around it that was very closely kind of design so we have the mental uh, we have the health center which has uh, orchards on the outer edge where the women who are coming to the center would actually come out work in the orchards earn a penny or two and then go back home because most of the women that kind of came here were imagined as half widows or women that were suffering from either a death of that death of a family family member at their house or the kind of uh, atrocities that are done on women in a region like this to having gone through that so so gardening and and and, and working in orchards orchards became almost like uh, an opportunity for them to come and do what what they'd like doing something they could engage themselves in and not think of what happened to them they almost sort of heal themselves the inner gardens were these flower gardens that were imagined with beautiful kind of smells and almost the the building also was imagined in such a way that always looked down to the inner garden where women could sit and talk to somebody on the upper floor etc and there was a water body almost like a reflecting pool that was kind of designed in the middle of the building where also the child care center and the uh, and and, uh, and eating facilities were kind of planned so every time you're sitting to have a meal or you're sitting with your child in the daycare center after your work you always have a beautiful view to kind of look out to uh, the school was the, the landscape of the school was with lawns around with mounds that went up and down so the kids would very readily come out run out of school and could play very easily in, in, a, in, a, in a setting like this the the library like i said was on top of a mound so it, that what that provided is because the weather in kashmir is extremely pleasant most of the year it provided for an opportunity to somebody to pick up a book within the library and also that was kind of sit outside and and enjoy reading the book on the mound they could lay down on the mound and read the book sit on the mound and read the book could also have a, a, encountering a lot of other people that were passing from the vicinity and kind of uh, just having a chat with them the memorial was set amidst a rose garden uh, and almost was kind of stepped so the women that kind of came here could not only take the roses as an offering to 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 the dead family members within the memorial but also could sit in the memorial and have a chat with other women and talk of the grievances that all of them have together so that that's how the whole the scheme of the garden was structured and now talking of every individual building in detail so the mental health center like i mentioned before was was a c-shaped courtyard building uh, a semantic of which was very clear that they had very kind of hard and solid uh, stone uh, walls and on the bottom floor and everything that kind of rose above the, the, the ground floor was always imagined in in thin frivolous sections of wood because I think that also is the semantic of, of the architecture in Kashmir so I didn't want to take away from that but make the buildings relatable in sense of, of the semantics such that people would, would want to very readily come into the buildings that I was designing so uh, the mental health center was always imagined as, as like I said, the rock, uh, like the stone floor at the bottom, uh, the stone uh, ground floor and the wooden upper floor with dubs. So the, the, the dubs are basically uh, a, lo a local terminology for jarokas as we, as we know them. So these jarokas also were planned in such a way that women, women could always look out of these jarokas while they were in the, in the health center and look out and talk to a lot of other people that were say in the courtyards, you know, there always were interactions possible and also the way 
did all the fenestrations were designed were such that at places there were very low windows given with like a place or a ledge to sit on so while you're sitting also you can always look out at the building look out of what's happening look out and talk to somebody else who's just passing by etc so all fenestrations were basically derived from the little stories that are written before and the architecture also kind of came up and, and shaped itself from that particular text that are written as short stories so this is how the mental health center was the school like i said were two volumes that were connected with bridges across so every time a, a, a kid went to school and had to go to a different classroom for a different activity he'd always come out through the landscape over a bridge go to another place so he'd always look down as to what's happening because i mean i i also feel very strongly that you know the social reality in kashmir is such that you can't completely eliminate that or neglect that while designing things like this so it was very important to let the child face this sort of social reality which they already are but not make an environment that would that would make them look at this sort of violence directly so everything that happened within the school always opened towards the inside so you know you always came out of the school to go to another place but there always was still a protected environment of the the, the kind of courtyard in the men, the middle that was designed and uh, even the classrooms were designed such that you could very readily run out of the classroom in your breaks and do all the other activities because the the school is a place of also play for children so you know the, the design was envisaged in a manner like this the semantic here was again very similar where there was a, a, a stone floor at the bottom and a very light wooden floor on top where all the other uh, functions of the school were imagined and the school was also a place that would almost run half a day but there were certain programs that were inserted in the school that could also become opportunities for the building to almost run throughout the day. So there was a multi-purpose hall, there was a huge cafeteria that also could be frequented by a lot of people that were probably not coming to the school but only to the garden but could come here and enjoy all these other services that were provided. Uh, the library on the other hand was not something that was so human in nature but almost was imagined as a monument. So what usually people don't know about the, the vernacular architecture of Kashmir is that there are a lot of important institutions that always will have have a wooden conical roof uh, a sorry a wooden pyramidal roof and the pyramidal roof actually finds its inspiration from the central asian architecture and this influence almost comes because Kashmir also shares a border with China so you know this is something that not a lot of people know about Kashmir because whatever travel that we've done in Kashmir as tourists is always along like I said before the boulevard and this sort of architecture is prevalent almost everywhere in in the the downtown so I, I looked at that as an opportunity of kind of uh, making this as an evident feature in in the kind of design I was doing so the library was almost imagined as this this massive kind of monumental pyramidal roof with with a core in the center that almost housed all the bookshelves and a ramp that kind of take you to, that took you up and made you look at all these books so you could pick your book come down and then all the other space was left free for somebody to kind of sit and read their books and uh, through the library cut another path of the garden so even while somebody was walking along the garden you would always encounter people in the library and then kind of move out and go back to the garden route so that and then the memorial and the market were also planned in such a way so the memorial i would i would specifically mention here is because uh, what, what 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 I noticed when I was in Kashmir is that although men have immense amount of opportunities of coming out and voicing their opinions or even say crying about their lost sons, the women always have to sit back at home and and, and sort of uh, curb their 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 grievances because they don't have any sort of place to come out and talk about these things. So even in the graveyard, while men are allowed to go and pray to all the graves the women aren't so the memorial was almost seen as an opportunity to let women be a part of of death as well so so although they could not enter the graveyard but they could still be in a memo in, in the memorial which was almost designed like a columbarium which is which is a large thick stone wall with these uh, shelves that are made within stone where remnants of people that are dead or names of people that are dead can be written and the women can come and very simply just sit there pray there cry there for a little while and go to whatever they have to do after that so this was almost seen as an opportunity for that and also as an opportunity for women to kind of start talking to other women about their, their grievances and problems so say for example two women came to a graveyard from two different parts of Kashmir they met there they spoke about these things and they almost had a little chat about what they were going through it obviously would make both of them feel a lot nicer when they went back home because just the fact that somebody else is, is, is there to understand what you've gone through I think is enough for somebody to get that sort of empowerment to you know voice something that they've gone through themselves too 
so the memorial was, was almost seen as an opportunity like that where also had within the stone these dubs like i spoke of before that looked out to the the landscape outside as well as inside so say while a procession of a dead body was being taken through the ceremonial pathway into the the graveyard the women although could not enter the graveyard but could still be a part of that from the dubs which were at a higher level so you know, that was a, this sort of imagination for the memorial and the market like i spoke about before was almost like uh, this this sort of um, say pavilion that at at points could be used as a market at points could be used as you know places where important people from a rally could stand and address the whole crowd when say the eid was happening and the prayer was happening etc etc so i mean that in 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 terms of the buildings i think that's something that that i had uh, taken into consideration to design all the buildings these smaller kind of nuances and gestures and this became the whole picture of what the building and what the whole garden of reconciliation was where it was always the edge of the building and the landscape that that you know the two where the two met basically was was this place where interactions would happen where people from various works of life would kind of come speak uh relieve their anger sorrows just get a voice basically and and it it always was imagined as as this space where reconciliation would would happen and i mean it it is an imagination as a now but i very strongly believe that you know if 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 an architecture like this is imagined and made it really would make a difference to people's lives because they would not only feel like this is this is their own space and would come out and talk but just the fact that you know a kid who's studying in the school has a mother who's coming in the health center and talking of things that she probably could not at home to 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 her own family about how she feels about her husband having disappeared or her husband having died in the conflict i think that at least for now is enough sort of empowerment for the kid to know that even he has a voice and you know he should do something about getting his voice heard so i think this project very simply tried to do that it, it tried to make lives people lives of people in in the region better it tried to just give them a platform for them to come out and and talk of things that they usually do not and just come out and 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 be in a beautifully landscape place for them to not only feel better each day of their lives no matter what was happening in the region but to have their small little haven where a lot of these interactions a lot of these meetings a lot of these these acts of reconciliation would be possible so i mean that's exactly what the the thesis intended to do and i hope that that it it in some sense in the way that i designed it almost achieved that uh and to whoever who's who's planning on giving the thesis this year who's already working on that and almost is working very very hard to get their buildings together there's only one thing that i that that's something that i learned from my experience with a topic like this and thesis and that's that's the only thing that i would like to share with you is just be extremely compassionate about the the kind of topic that you've selected and you want to do because uh there'll be a lot of people that will come and bog you down people that will doubt your choices of the topic that you've taken the side that you've taken and i myself have been called anti national a lot of times and i said i was working in kashmir been called pro terrorist because i was working for the people in kashmir a lot of people came and bog me down saying but you know this is a very politically uh sensitive place and you making a comment is just probably going to make you uh anti national in the eyes of many and 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 things like those and why are you talking for the people in kashmir all of them are the, the reason the conflict is happening because of etc etc but i think it's only the belief that you have in the topic that you've selected and the belief and the compassion that you have for what you're doing which is architecture that will actually help you in coming up with uh, a thesis that is definitely worth that one year that you worked on it so that's the only piece of advice that i would give anybody is that be extremely compassionate about your work be very regular with it and believe in what you're doing and believe that what you're doing is correct and i mean architecture has incredible amount of power that a lot of people and a lot of us don't usually realize when we're in academics and trying to you know just get through with those five years of of working nights and stuff like that but i mean it's very important for us to realize that what we're doing has uh, has a lot of responsibility and at the same time a lot of power